Excuse me, would you give Maquette five seconds of your time to sell you on itself? But oh, there's no escape Cause you're here to stay Goodbye to the day Wrapped up and tied away so... Maquette is a first-person puzzle game which, as illustrated by the trailer clip, has the unique twist that its entire game world is recursive. Which means that outside the walls of the map, there's a bigger, identical version of the world, and inside the big gazebo in the center, a smaller one. And many of the game's puzzles revolve around doing something in one version of the world to affect another, like taking a random bridge you found and putting it on the miniature to spawn a much bigger bridge you can walk across. This game joins the growing ranks of glitzy, artistic indie puzzlers toying with mind-blowing perspective puzzles, but its actual approach to puzzle design is entirely different from its peers. Throw in some fantastic art direction, Hollywood actors putting in a solid voice acting performance for once, and a publisher with a pure pedigree, and there are a lot of reasons to be excited about Maquette. As always, I'm Alex, and this is First Five, where I ask if games are worth your time, not your money. I played a game for five hours, and I'm gonna tell you if those were five hours well spent. And today, we're playing with scale in Maquette. Before we get too deep into the review, I did receive a free review copy of this game, so heads up. I don't usually dwell on a game's publisher, but to say Maquette is an extremely Annapurna game is an understatement. It's a puzzle game with a unique hook that has the aesthetic of Edith Finch, a story that tackles the same themes as Florence, and music that had me immediately putting on Sayonara Wild Hearts soundtrack after I was done. I only bring them up because they've crafted a very specific image for themselves, and if it's one you're already sold on, this paragraph was probably enough to have you already pulling out your wallet. Indeed, Maquette's highest point is likely that carefully curated aesthetic. There's all kinds of great stuff going on here. It's got some pretty great art direction that leads to some very shiny architecture. It's got these great little cutscenes with hand-drawn art, it's got all these indie band songs that come on from time to time. Most games would be happy to execute on one of these different artistic ideas at the level that Maquette does, and yet here they all are, bouncing around in the same game right alongside the voices of Bryce Dallas Howard and Seth Gable. And in that last case, the even more astounding fact is that for once, hiring some Hollywood stars actually worked out in Maquette's favor. These two do a ton to breathe life into the otherwise pretty unremarkable narrative attached to Maquette. I, uh, I just started drawing again. I used to sketch constantly and then, I don't know, I just stopped. So did I. I mean, there was a time in elementary school when I was the girl who was good at drawing. The girl who was good at drawing? I remember that girl. Everyone was always like, oh, please, will you help me with my poster? How do I draw hands? Exactly. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to draw hands. I'm five years old. <laughs> also, fun factoid, the two actors in question are an actual married couple, and I can only imagine how much fun they had acting their way through an entirely different fictional relationship. That just sounds like the sort of thing you have way too much fun goofing around with in the sound booth. But while the actors make the best of it, the narrative isn't really what to write home about. For the most part, it's just a pretty bog-standard narrative following the rise and fall of one couple's relationship. It's got a few quirks in the moment-to-moment -moment banter, both characters draw and enjoy snarking at each other, but the actual bullet point events of the plot couldn't be much vaguer or more generic, and the story kinda just happens at its own pace, scrawled on walls one sentence at a time, and in those cutscenes at the end of each puzzle while only being tangentially related to the gameplay. Which, uh, speaking of, we should probably get around to talking about that. <clears throat> Maquette is far from the first puzzle game to build itself around a mind-melting, perspective-based premise. Superliminal lets you change the size of objects based on their location compared to you. Aetherborn is an Escher-esque world that lets you run around on the walls and ceiling. Heck, Manifold Garden already did the whole infinite recursion thing last year. So you would think that Maquette would feel fairly similar to these other titles, but in actuality, this game delineates quite strongly from its peers with its puzzle design. All these other games treat their conceits like five-dimensional Rubik's Cubes. They're intricate, complicated constructions that spend a dozen puzzles teaching you exactly exactly how their mechanics work, then derive their difficulty from making you apply them in more elaborate multi-step puzzles. In contrast, Maquette is simple and direct to the point of almost being Spartan. It has a very narrow possibility space where you can only ever interact with one or two elements in the entire world at any given time, and each of its puzzles are extremely simple and only feature one or two steps, but are made interesting because each step is itself a new revelation about the game's mechanics. You start the game with a single rule. Objects maintain a relative size to the world you place them in. It's a mechanic that's a lot easier to explain visually, so let me just, you know, show you how it works. That's it. 
There is only one other rule in all of Maquette, and it's a simple one to do with colored keycards. Every other puzzle is simply the introduction of a new application for that first rule on top of each previous one you already had to learn. And this means that unlike most other puzzlers, Maquette is entirely about figuring out how it works and nothing else. Once you've learned how one aspect of the game's world functions, there's never an application step. The game just moves on because, well, you already figured out how it works. But because the challenge is entirely about discovering these revelations, it can sometimes feel like trying to interact with a solid concrete wall. Most most puzzle games have something you can fiddle around and experiment with if you get stuck, but Maquette will just keep staring at you as you run in circles for 15 minutes trying the same three simple things over and over again until you eventually get the aha moment to move on. And I'll be honest in saying that Maquette isn't my favorite puzzle game ever. For me, the joy of Maquette wasn't in the solving, but was in looking back at the solution after I'd finally discovered it and marveling at how well constructed and clever the game was. So Maquette requires a bit of a specific mindset to really enjoy, one that revels in geeking out over the game's construction more than the satisfaction crunch of a good brain teaser. But it is undeniably a very well constructed game. There isn't a wasted bone in its runtime. No mechanic repeats twice without being recontextualized in a creative way, every puzzle makes perfect sense in hindsight, and every solution is a fresh revelation on how the rules of Maquette's unique recursive world work. It doesn't get any tighter or more clockwork than this. So tight, in fact, that if I actually started giving concrete examples, I'd probably end up spoiling a quarter of the game's puzzle solutions just explaining how the game's rules work beyond the absolute basics. There are only really, like, 20 puzzles total, so the blinder you can go in, probably the better. Which is probably my cue to start wrapping this up. So, let's ask the big question. What do you get out of five hours with my cat? This is another short and tight one. Four-ish hours was enough for me to see the credits, and unless you're looking to speedrun it for a few achievements, there isn't much reason to go back and do it again. And even then, a vast majority of my time was spent cluelessly wandering in circles trying to solve Maquette's puzzles. If you're a bit quicker to figure things out than I was, you could probably clear it in far less time. And the primary reason why Maquette is so short is because it is so insistent on never repeating itself, making every puzzle a unique but natural extension of the previous one. This game's pacing is pretty impeccable. Maquette's construction is as ornate and meticulous as the titular model the entire game revolves around. It's a game that requires a little bit of patience, and it's a bit of a shame about the narrative, but there's also so much great stuff going on with this game. It's an aesthetic delight that features a level of simplicity that belies its cleverness, and while it wasn't quite a grand slam with me personally, I think there are definitely a lot of puzzle fans out there who will appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this review as much as I liked Maquette, consider supporting me on Patreon. With your generous support, I can start doing all kinds of cool stuff, like more in-depth video essays and five-hour streams where I review games like this in real time. So if any of that sounds cool, please consider becoming a patron today. But I hope you enjoyed this first five review. Thanks for watching this far, and I'll see you all next week.